In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My name is Father Philip Smith of the Kent Estuary Catholic Churches in the southern part of Cumbria. I'm going to give a homily on the first Sunday of Lent in the cycle year B of the Catholic cycle. And I'm going to, uh, with you, just think over the readings. Now, I do say I've got a pastoral letter, which I will read from our bishop, Bishop Paul Swarbrick. I add that um, uh, I think it's a very much a, a pastor's letter rather than a finely wrought and very uh, important theological one. So uh, uh, I think it's uh, Bishop Ball sort of speaking from the heart. Uh, let's go to the readings first, which we will uh, can take in. Please read those readings. The first reading is about Noah. God spoke to Noah and his sons after the flood had subsided. And he says, I'm going to make a covenant, a binding agreement, covenant, very important, with you and your descendants. Uh, also with every living creature. And it's about, no, you won't be swept away in a flood. But, and he says, here's... Uh, my sign, I'll put it in the sky, it's a rainbow, uh, just as a sign of that covenant. And it, it might be an idea for us to remember always, if we see a rainbow, that God, as it were, commits himself to defend us, to be close to us. Obviously, when we hear covenant, we think of the covenant that is uh, completed by Jesus himself, who comes down to us to say, here's the fulfilment of the covenant agreement in me. I'm here to be for you, to take on the sins of the world, on my shoulders, to give you the future beyond this world. Um, and, but, Looking at the first reading, the covenant, your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. So it's a two-way thing. Always a two-way covenant binding agreement. On one side, God will protect us. On our side, we will follow. What are the eternal rules for good behaviour and reverence to God? Uh, this is God's mercy. Because the Lord is good and upright, he shows us the path through those rules. He guides the humble on the right path. So the rules we have are not burdens. They're designed to help us. And of course, this will come up really in our Lent. Lent is getting back on track. If we've been negligent with our lives and our moral lives particularly, our spiritual lives, then we can get back on track. The second reading from the letter of St. Peter just reminds ourselves that Christ, though innocent, died once for, for sins, died for the guilty to lead us to God. And that lovely statement uh, that God is there for us in Jesus. Um, and he's now after the resurrection, with the Father in heaven, pleading and helping us on the way. And finally, uh, the first, uh, uh, the short gospel from Mark. Mark is uh, the shortest gospel, says everything uh, very briefly, but there's a lot of meaning in what he says. Now, um, he spoke of the Jesus's 40 days in the wilderness, preparing for his three years of ministry. A big retreat, as it were. Yes, he's going to be tested there, because when you come up against yourself, Satan is not far away to try and derail you. Indeed, as Bishop Paul says, look, the desert which was external for our Lord, 
in actual fact, is the wasteland within our lives, where there is dissatisfaction, where, the, when, where things are not right, and that we've got to go into the desert for 40 days to get it right. But uh, let's, uh, that'll come in a moment in Bishop Paul's uh, letter. After John had been arrested, uh, and he, he, he was with the wild beasts, and the angels looked after him. So he drove Jesus into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan. The angels looked after him. And then Jesus started his ministry. The kingdom of God is near at hand. So the angels were with him. It was not solitary. It was with his father. And he was aided by the spirit, the angels. Let's just go to the letter of Bishop Paul. My dear people, he says, Lent can be used by some as an opportunity to recover New Year's resolutions that have gone a little astray. Being able to see evidence of progress and having targets can be useful. But before we dash off to the bathroom scales, note that our blessed Lord offers us another target far more valuable, even if our progress is more difficult to measure. Can you picture Jesus as he turns his back on the crowds, on Mary, on his family, neighbours, strangers, and walks away towards a vast, empty wasteland? No shepherd's paths go there. No isolated villages are found there. For thirty years he's lived anonymously among those to whom he had been sent, so that he might save them from sin. Those hidden years of waiting are now over, but if he is to be fit for the task ahead, there is this final great act of intense preparation. His time in the wilderness. As yet, he has performed no public miracles, given no teaching, told no one of his parables, nor has he gathered any disciples or followers. Picture him as he slips away alone, hardly noticed by the majority, whose attention is on the river and the figure of the Baptist. Watch, because what he is doing is done for you and for countless others. Watch, because in fact he takes you with him, and as you see him enter the wilderness, know that, in fact, he is entering another wilderness. The wilderness that is of the human heart. Your heart. St Mark tells us that he will find that wilderness already occupied. He will find Satan there, the spoiler, the tempter, who claims your heart as his. Jesus will find there the wild beasts of your emotions, ambitions, beliefs, all grown wild. He will find greed and grief and fear and so much else that refuses to be satisfied. So much that harms us from within. But these he will set himself to tame. He will find there are there the angels there, given to us by loving Father, the first prophets of hope and a better life, our dear friends and servants since the moment of our conception. Prayer, fasting and sharing with the poor are the time-tested traditions of Lent that we will put into practice this Lent with hopes of driving out the devil taming the beasts and putting us at one at one with the angels. But these are not the aims or goals for a successful Lent. They are only the means of achieving a far greater goal, the goal of knowing more intimately, or perhaps for the first time, the heart of the loving Father, who 
who sent his only Son to save us and share his life with us. You and I have many concerns competing for our time and attention, family, work, friends, matters of social justice and charity. The sheer quantity and complexity can overwhelm and weary us, unless we first set ourselves to know the Lord and something of his love. You must know that his love is not just an ideal. It's a love that has become flesh and dwells amongst us. He has made his home in us that we might make ours in him. St Paul tells us in the second reading that we hold a treasure not made of gold but far greater worth. This Lent need not be our usual starting again, as if life is a game of snakes and ladders in which we find ourselves annually starting again from the old beginning. Instead, we can know how Jesus has driven the snakes from this board, from the Garden of Eden, and left only ladders. The best news is that he is the ladder, and all we must do is to climb on his back, to rise up with him at Easter. So no long faces, no deep despairing breaths, as we prepare ourselves for the usual two steps forward, three back, and the sense that we and this world are slowly slipping away from God. I'm terribly sorry. I should have put the phone away, shouldn't I? Uh, So no long faces, no deep despairing breaths as we prepare ourselves for the usual two steps forward, three back, and the sense that we and this world are slowly slipping away from God. It is God who does the miracles. We have only to believe and persevere in our belief. See Jesus setting about his work in your wilderness. And many, and may your experiences this Lent be more in keeping of the phrase used by St. John Henry Newman. Heart speaks unto heart. With my blessing for you and those you pray for. Bishop Paul Swarbrick. Bishop of Lancaster. God bless you and keep you. And I wish you, as I do to my parishes, a happy Lent. It should be a good time getting things right, getting things clear, clearing up the negligences of the past year, spiritually speaking. God bless you.